is going to start in two
uh, if these filmmakers are being brave and showing you these awesome films, what are you going to do at the end of those films? <laughs> okay. And then if we're in the middle of the film, okay, and we're all watching, what are you going to do? Good. Yes. That's fucking right. You are a smart bunch, okay? Um, so I would love to welcome up our first two filmmakers. Give it up for Megan and Brendan. House lights for a second? Oh, sure. Thank you, oh, Chef. Oh, oh. Uh, how many people like Star Wars? Round of applause. Uh, how many people know the name Kai Sanat? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the YouTubers. Uh, oh, <laughs> Kit, Kit Bisto. <laughs> You'll definitely like this. <laughs> um, hey, for ours, you can laugh. That's a big one. So, But you don't have to if it's shit. So that's, that's kind of the whole goal. Um, I don't think there's anything left to say. This thing was really fun to make. It released September 25th of last year. It was a pleasure to direct Megan Turner and Megan Johnson, wherever she is. They are starring in Baby Yoda Girlies. I think that's it, everyone. Mr. Allen's lunches, it loses all the pizzazz. Speaking of pizzazz, you look so great. Oh, I haven't seen you since I finished the 79 Day Baby Yoda Kelp Shred Challenge. Oh my god. I'm so dedicated. You're stunning. Girl, thank you, but you literally look otherworldly. Like, ooh, <laughs> Natalie Portman? This woman never ages. Oh my god, stop. You're slaying, like, Oh, <gasps> a 1983 Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More like, uh, uh cuter than Wicked the Ewok? <laughs> no, I'm no, no, no. I am a student's baby Yoda, right? I'm sorry if I say 
Jason told me that he didn't know this place served dykes. They followed me on my walk home. Hey, come on! Hey, come on! I tried ignoring them, but they ran after me. Told me a bitch like me needed to be raped straight. I woke up behind the bar in the morning. Do they still look down the street? It's okay. Just go easy on the hugs. I think they broke my ribs. Well, fuck it. Let's just go to the doctor. No, no. It's, it's okay. I promise. Broken ribs never heal right anyways. I'm okay. I promise. I love you. I love you.
Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't let this go. I can't let them get away with it. Meet me at their house in an hour. Bring it back. I love you. You always have. I love you, Dakota. I love you. Where to next?
scary film. so grateful that every day I grow more and more into my best self.
which sin are you sorry for?
women, thank you. <laughs> about to see is the first live screening of the dog show bookie. <laughs> this one was really a, a crazy one to make. It took about a year total from conception to completion. There are a couple people I really want to thank. Uh, Henry Fisher, right there, is the director of photography. Uh, Megan Johnson was the production designer. A lot of the cast are from Atlanta. So this is like a three-city production because of that. We had a lot of cats and crew. And there is a gentleman named Trevor Hardin in this place that has been so kind and been a production pal of mine. Trevor, are you here? Where are you? Yeah, Trevor! Yeah. Yeah. Give it up for Trevor Hardin. There he is! Uh, the reason Baby Yoda Girl is in this one looks so crispy is because Trevor is so gracious enough to work with us with his equipment. So um, hire Hardin Creative. Do not hit him up unless you have money. Uh, uh, friends, this one's really crazy. I hope you like the word fuck, because it's in it a lot. And uh, I hope you also like dogs. Without any further ado, the live premiere of Dog Show Book. Like a 
Scott. Good. Five thousand dollars on Tip Tip. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
electronic problem with the raffles at this theater. Yeah, yeah where's Shaylin? Did she participate? <laughs> she did. She did. Come on. Yeah, we're just lucky Shaylin didn't win. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, well, thanks so much for participating in that raffle. All that, mo all that money that you spent on that raffle goes to the one week movie. So thank you so much. <laughs> Production on my senior thesis. Um, so we'll be... um, yeah, very exciting to be moving into post for that. Uh, just hoping to do writer, directing, producing. I love anything queer. I love anything with horror. I love some drama. Um, keep keep an eye out in the future. You'll see some stuff for me. Hi everybody. My name is Megan Turner. Um, I, I am an improviser here at Front Porch Improv. And I was Grogu in the sketch. <laughs> uh, my pronouns are CNA. And we were hand together for MJ. She's been working her ass off for the It's very true. She, you, did you see the promo video she made? Yeah! yeah. Holy shit. Um, yes, I feel honored to be up here. My name is Brandon Davis. I do weird shit with cameras. It's very fun. I, I wrote um, Baby Yoda Girlies. That was a big passion project. Dog Show Loki took a lot of effort. Yeah, I'm sure you could tell that was a passion project. Um, I've produced 32 short films now. I've directed 19. The first 15 are shit. <laughs> but we got somewhere, boys. Um, that's how you improve. Just keep making it. So I love independent film a lot. Um, I made a lot of comedies, but now I'm focusing on more dramatic work, which I'm always in awe of, so it's really cool. And I'm writing a feature film like every dude that's 28, so I'm excited. It's called Bedrock. It's ridiculous. It'll take me five years to make. I can't wait to show it to you. Especially since I mainly focus in producing, just helping to build that crew. I take a lot of pride in knowing that I built a crew that like is a safe space where everyone feels heard and like everyone's super passionate about the project and that definitely comes through when you're directing too. Like you can feel the energy on set. Mm -hmm. 
pizza. <laughs> yeah. um, I think when I started directing, it was because of uh, the wrong reasons. And after doing it for a while, I was like, oh, the most beautiful part of this to me is the collaboration with people because you just think about shit for so hard. You make all these dumb storyboards in your room with a graphite pencil, and then you have to pass it over to the people that you're working with and that you have chosen to trust. So I think the most rewarding part for me is seeing people shine like they do. Um, and I get to watch my friends be fucking hilarious on screen. It's so cool. So I feel like I've been lucky enough to work with really talented people, and I would be nowhere without them. So collaboration, that's my favorite part. Cool. Um, so the next question is, what's something you wish you knew starting out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can take a moment, yeah. Now I have my answer. Okay. <laughs> it's expensive. It's so expensive. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like, I mean, in the pre-production classes at school, they tell you that, like, fundraising is a really big part of it. Um, but for Ribcage, we only had maybe three or four weeks to raise the money. Um, so definitely, like, I just, I wish I knew how much it would cost going into it. It definitely takes a village to get that money raised, and that's why things like this are so important. So, like, the community gets involved, because that's, we really can't do it without the community at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can you read the question? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no, I threw it down. Oh. It's, uh, what do you wish you knew oh, starting yeah, yeah. out? Um, I wish I knew that looking so far forward is actually a waste of time. I think that my first film was a very, uh, such, a, such a learning experience. Um, both like heartbreakingly and also like very nicely. There was nice surprises, but um, I wish I knew that it's not about who you want to be or wh where you're going. It's about where you're at right now and enjoying the the newness of it all and the people that you get to meet and you know just not wishing time away, which I think applies outside of film. But yeah. And also money, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of money. Um, but yeah, other than that, love it. Cool. cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never directed anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's definitely like a superpower to me watching other people direct things. Um, knowing very little about it, but I can speak to that question of what do you wish you knew back then? Just like as um, a performer, mm -hmm. like someone who like is looking towards like creative endeavors and stuff, and I feel like it's really easy to like hype yourself up and be like, oh, this is gonna be like the one, everyone's gonna love this, I'm going to Vegas, baby. <laughs> That's not what it is. Like, yeah, you might get to Vegas one day, um, and if you do, it's because it's gonna be because of like all of the like Brendan said he did a bunch of stuff that was shit, and you're not gonna get to Vegas unless you do all that shit stuff. And so, like, not saying what you're gonna do is shit, but <laughs> sometimes it does like feel like that. Like, you can't be really hard on yourself, especially like watching your face on like a projector in front of people, um, it, get, it takes a lot of like getting used to and stuff. So like, I, I think what I'm trying to say is the stepping stones are more valuable than they feel when you're stepping on them. So just like get out there, start, <laughs> get out there, just start doing stuff, making stuff, because that's the only way you're gonna learn um, for your shit to pop off. So, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> um, I think the thing that I have come to is when I first started out, I was so focused on results, and I was like, man, this shit is not getting any views, and it really is like, you have to go through a lot of work to feel proud of it, I think, with film, because it's just, there's so many variables with it, and it's a lot of trust in other people, and I really struggled with that at first, and the thing that I grew to love about it was this whole like, a growth mindset thing. I took a workshop here with a guy called Eric Conncutt. And you talk about, yeah, round of applause for Eric Cunningham. Bring it around! Bring it around! John Cena music! Um, uh, the whole switch is like, hey, you can't control if people are going to love your work, but you have to love it. And you have to look at every piece you make as uh, a growing experience and a learning experience and not this is my magnum opus. Because the first time you think that, you're wrong, to be very honest with you. And if you ever think that, you're probably wrong, because 
you just gotta keep going one step forward um, and like look forward to the next project, but focus on the one that you're making. We tried so hard to make so many in a row, and it just, we got lost. And kind of like what you were saying, Grace, getting lost looking forward is uh, a curse to film. Just focus on your project right now. So, yeah, that's what I wish I would have known. Can I add to that? Um, yeah. No! <laughs> um, yeah, I think that my biggest learning curve was um, potential is kind of made up. Potential is definitely something that you're waiting to get assigned, but it's really just what you believe in your, like the amount that you believe in yourself. Um, and if you don't validate yourself, it, you, you, you can't keep, like looking for it in other people, and I think especially in art, it's we have to make it monetary, and so we are looking for external validation. But if you don't believe in your art that you're making for yourself, most importantly, um, then I think it gets a little lost. And also about I think the the magnum opus thing. I think that I also used to think that yes, but. I've kind of shifted it to, if I'm not making a project that doesn't feel like my magnum opus right now to me, then it's not worth my time. Okay, we have a question, re ribcage. What was the biggest challenge with working with prosthetics? Ooh. Um, definitely just making them. <laughs> I did not do any of the work making them. I had a really great SFX artist who used a multitude of materials. Um, I think in this cut specifically, it doesn't necessarily look as real as it could be, but that's also just part of the filmmaking process where like the coloring, you're able to get that in, make it look darker, make it look more like a rib cage and lungs and all that. Um, but something that was really stressful was we only had like one or two takes to get when we're taking that rib cage out. Um, and also with blood, it's just so messy. Um, so like, if you make a mistake, if something sprays the wrong way, like you just have to be very precise. We had someone like blowing blood through a straw to make sure the splatters were like landing perfectly. Um, yeah, it was a it was a challenge, but it was a lot of fun. Can I ask a follow up question? You can the shot where he is literally or she is literally reaching into him. That's a very difficult like practical effect to do. What was the actual like setup for that? We cut a hole in a shirt. Hell yeah. That was it. That's it. <laughs> and then there was, um, like, the fake rib was, like, taped to the actor side. Um, so they were able to pull it out. And that's when we had the blood uh, coming through the straw to time, to time it correctly. That was very impressive. Thank you. Cool. Woo! 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 You guys are so cool. <laughs> okay, uh, for Baby Yoda girlies, how many takes did the shock collar shock? <laughs> Johnson's. Yeah. <laughs> On the call sheet, there was one T J. Um, I think it was like about five takes. Um, gosh, I probably made you do it too many times. And yeah, he said there was gonna be like cushion on yeah, the floor, and, and then day off there was no cushion. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't great. So, yeah. and honestly, that shot was really interesting because the overhead shot, we had to, like, the tripod is literally over Megan when she's falling. And it was just very difficult to choreograph in a very tight space. Also, that's Stephen Meyer's garage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we oh, had. Oh, sorry. sorry, do you have more? Oh, yeah. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this is not about that question. <laughs> know this. So the day of filming, we <laughs> put on the baby Yoda like makeup and like the hat and stuff. And like the very first take, MJ had not seen me yet. <laughs> and I don't know, it was one of my favorite moments as just a performer in my life to turn around knowing I look like silly and MJ's just like <laughs> for the camera. Um, I just wanted to share that. <laughs> That scream was the first take, by the way. That was that was that really? yeah, that was a real reaction. Scream. <laughs> um, okay, the next is uh, what's your favorite shot you've achieved? My end fairy shot. Every time I watch it, I watch it like a thousand times. I'm like, oh my god, butterflies! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I also want to talk about the cut a little bit. Um, it didn't have violin in it, which was so sad. But there's gonna be violin um, all throughout the film, and um, it's very much portrait of a lady on fire. If you guys have seen that, no. um, like dark femininity. 
Um, and on the day, we didn't know what we were going to do for that shot until we shot it. And um, our gaffer was like, oh, we're outside and I don't know how to light them because we're spinning around and there's nowhere we can possibly hide lights. And so we just put um, some pavo tubes, which are like, they look like a, a like, you know, uh, in the fluorescent uh, in Walmart, <laughs> uh, but like one bar of them. And we put like a, a square, we had our little camera rig, and we spun around, I think like two or three times. Yeah. Cool. I think the favorite, my favorite shot that I've done was not in this, it was probably in my thesis. There's a scene at the end, um, there's another murder, um, but there's a scene at the end, and she has this realization about what she did, and it's really cool. However, for this, I will say my favorite shot is probably, um, I just, I love the aesthetic of like girls covered in blood. Like I love a good scream queen, so I really love the shot of uh, Coda's hand, like lighting that cigarette, and also the one where we go into the ribs, just because I know all the work that it took to get that done, and I think once it's colored, it's gonna, it's gonna look really good. Yeah. Uh, I think, honestly, my favorite shot was in the first thing we ever made, which was about two roommates that fight to the death over a cookie with Nerf guns. <laughs> Can you sense a theme in my work? Um, it's airing out friendships, but there is a one -er in that, and it was just like, I had no fucking idea what I was doing. I was just like, let's just try this. I've seen this in a movie before. And it's a one -er through a hallway where we go through two or three different rooms with completely different color changes, and that just felt like the ignorant ambition you have when you start out as an artist with this, you're just like, all right, that sounds cool, let's try it. And everyone that you're working with is like, you're fucking insane, what are you talking about? That's gonna cost so much money. So um, that was probably my favorite. And I think, I'm just gonna shout out favorite uh, shots in Baby Yoda girlies. The intense shot on MJ when every time you say Baby Yoda, and it cuts that really weird shot. That's so strange, and it doesn't really belong in a comedy sketch, but I wanted to make it look really intense, so I'm, I'm proud of that, because it's just it doesn't fit in the rest of the world, but I think it works. And then in fantasy, God, oh God, that was the working title, holy shit, Dog Show Boogie, Henry and I choreographed the shot where Mikey calls typical fucking Ellen, and the crowd like moves out of the way to reveal Mikey, and that, was just delightful. And also, we got a fog machine two hours into that shoot because we were like, you want fog? And Aaron was like, yeah, let's pull my fog guy. And so we had fog flew in, and then we got that really fun shot. And yeah, I'd say there's my, uh, where's my three? Nice. That was actually, that was fog in a can, that shot, because I was underneath going to the Yes! Uh, That's how I learned about fog in a can. I'm pretty sure we got that fog machine and did not use did it. Did not use it. Wow. <laughs> so, that's how uh, that's a disgusting Brendan. <laughs> um, okay, so this will be our last question. Um, what's your favorite experience on set? Oh, damn, I wasted I know, you, I know, I know. You can do second favorite if okay. you want. <laughs> Um, well, so I think my, so first of all, it was really, really cool to see what Trevor and Hardin Creatives did to Stephen Meyer's house. I had never been to Stephen Meyer's house, but I was like, it doesn't look like this, I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> Like they were watching, I don't know anything about film. They were watching, they were watching what the camera was seeing from the garage with headphones on, and I was like, hey, yo, this is cool. Um, and I think my favorite, my favorite part about um, that process was before we got on set, and it was still during the writing process, and um, I just met MJ and Brendan at MJ's house, and like it was also a concept. And we just like improvised, like scene after scene after scene. And it was so cool to be like, oh, that was fun. That's our character now. And then we just did that for like two hours. And I think that that really like helped the chemistry on the day that we shot um, because we got to like flesh out those characters together and like figure out a relationship for so long together. Um, so that was really cool. I'm gonna interject with a tiny bit about rehearsal as a director. A lot of directors are like, I don't need rehearsal. I'm a person that's like, we have to drill this so you feel comfortable on set. And the only reason that they are so fucking funny in that is because they were able to build those characters together beforehand, like just to echo what you're saying, because I think that was really important. Um, my favorite moment on set was keeping the baby Yoda face 
from Megan Johnson, and you turning around, and I was like, that is so funny. Uh, that's the best scream I've ever heard in something that doesn't need that. I had to sit alone in the kitchen for like an hour. <laughs> All right, here's the picture. There's, a, there's like a corner of a wall, and Megan Turner's sitting here on a chair, and that makes, it's like, Megan, you can't go back there. You can't see her. It was very funny, so uh, I'm, I'm a bastard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was really fun, though. My favorite moment is probably also the ending fairy shot. Um, I just remember being on set that day and walk, looking over the field and you're like, oh my god, this is never gonna happen again. Um, and just the kind of special feeling you get when you have worked so hard for something with so many people and like that end shot called cut and it like it went down there and it was like an eclipse and everyone was like, I feel like I just did an energy seance and I was like, that's crazy. I got on a camera. <laughs> meant to rehearse that, I do agree that re rehearsal is really a lifesaver because there's nothing you want to really try on set because time is money. And um, so we were able to get them together for one rehearsal because there was like seven or eight women in that scene, which is so many schedules to schedule. And that's a big part of film too. Um, so you do what you can. And we got together. The only choreography that I had was I'd seen Outlander and I was like, I like when they do the Celtic stuff, that's cool. <laughs> so, did some YouTubing, went to some related videos, and then showed those and, um, and kind of just gave them the background of what the dance is supposed to be, which is kind of um, releasing and purging all of your bad energy and claiming back what's yours from the world. Um, which was nice to film and felt good, I'm told, for the actors. Um, so yeah, it was really nice. My favorite moment on set was honestly like any moment on Ripcage. It was a very small group of us that were working on this film, which made it feel a lot like friends making a movie, not like it was something that we were like forced to do or like anyone signed on to because they didn't want to. Um, and I just remember that obviously like it's a it's a heavy scene until we get to the fun part with the kills. Um, but the dynamic between like my talent and just everyone on, on set, like we were able to have like breaks in between where everyone was giggling and laughing and like having check-ins with each other where it didn't feel as heavy, which made it really nice. Cool. Give it up for these <laughs>